fantastic guest, as you've already heard. This morning, I've got a guest who, when he arrived, he went into makeup and he had two big cucumbers put on his eyes to make them look even more handsome than before. And what do we do with the other cucumber? Yeah, well, <laughs> I think the less said about that, the yes. better. And then he talked about Beethoven and conductors, and he's just brought All a whole new lies. atmosphere to the show. He is the fantastically talented John Sessions. Mr. Smug, yes. Uh, no, I thought yes. it was nice that you immediately came and talked about early romantic lyric poetry and things. You know, <laughs> metaphysical, what you call it? It's a terrible woman, a terrible woman. Now, when you were, you, you said in the papers, in different interviews, that you were a terrible snob when you were little. I was. Now, is this true? Well, I'll cite one example. There was a, I was caned for this, actually. <laughs> I said in this, one of those schools, you got caned for everything. That's why, was, that's why we're smiling all the time. Uh, the, I said in the school magazine that I thought that people shouldn't listen to the Beatles, oh, age hint there, uh, and sheep-headed monstrosities like that. I was ten, can you imagine? They should listen to Beethoven, Schubert, Mozart and Haydn. Can you imagine what I was like? Mm. I was Violet the Elizabeth The same as you were this morning. Exactly, yes. <laughs> I wore a monocle and big boys went past me and uh, mud from their bicycles went in my face. No, it wasn't quite that bad. But oh. yes, I was um, a bit precocious. And what clothes did you wear at your school? We used to wear in the summer, we used to wear a straw boater uh, and a silk square at the neck. It's a Bedford Modern What, school. a little cravatty thing? A little cravatty oh, thing. how awful. And uh, we used to wear black caps in the winter. And if you couldn't swim two lengths of the swimming pool, you used to have a white button stitched into your hat. What, to humiliate into... you? Yes. And of course, all the boarders could swim. You know, they, they also had all the broken noses because they fought permanently like Rottweilers. And uh, you really had to get rid of the button, and I didn't get rid of my button. Ever? That's a metaphor, by the way. No, I got rid of my button eventually. Yo. Hey. Me and Barry White lasted at the same time, you know what I mean? Because your love is big. <laughs> I love things big, big. Now, tell me also about... <laughs> tell me also, were you um, one of those sort of classic comedians where you were always getting bullied and you had to be hilarious and funny? And yes, Paula, I was. <laughs> that was a rather brief answer. Yes, it was. I, I should go on a bit. <laughs> but I was, yes. So I thought, do something. You can't beat them up, so make them laugh, to quote Charlie Chester. You've, um, you've got a degree, an MA and almost a PhD as well. Yes, yes. I, I did lots of sort of uh, shows and stuff in Canada, so I, I didn't really concentrate. I was actually trying to preserve my sanity, because Canada is not especially interesting. Uh, in fact, Canada, where I was in Canada, it... Um, it was incredibly uninteresting, you know, and um, I like life to be like a Mexican with an electrical socket shoved up his bottom. You know, I like it to be fast and exciting and, and wild. I used to go down to New York every so often to remind myself that I was still a human being. And did you teach? I did. I taught undergraduates. Big, strapping Ukrainian girls. And were they Names all like mad Maslava. about you? Um, what were you teaching them? I was teaching them the difference between the Petrarchan and the Shakespearean sonnet. Oh. You know, the way you do. And oh, uh, they were all very beautiful. They were all, a lot of them looked like sort of Ursula Andrews. Did they? Yes. And there was a little bit of that, if you give me a B plus or an A, then perhaps you might have a cocoa tonight. Really? A bit of that was going down, yes. Gosh, and I picked the that academic word. world is never what you think, is yes, it? Yes, so there was a little bit of that going on, yes. But n nobody that I knew succumbed. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, you've got a new series starting on May the 8th. I have indeed. What is this new series? It's um, six shows. Uh, called Likely Stories. And, is it uh, just you on your own? It's me usual? showing off, mm. I'm afraid so. And it's cheaper, and I get paid more, because mm. we've got lots of other people playing the other and part. And just one set with a picture drawn on it? Yes, yeah, so they're quite, quite flashy sets this oh, time, right. actually. And the scripts are, are very fast, and uh, there's about ten characters in each. The, that one you saw there is about a, a character not unlike Dirk Bogart, um, who comes back to Britain to do the Sugar Puff Honey Monster advert. Uh, and discovers at the last minute he has to do it with the, without the head. But he's shooting it in the street where Richard Attenborough is having a meeting about the future of the British film industry. So he has to, because he's so embarrassed about it, he has to pretend to them that that's not what he's doing. So. There's another one about a big earth mother, one of the, who, who mistakes Chris Eubank for a spiritual leader. <laughs> <laughs> she meets Chris on the train and assumes that uh, Chris is an extremely religious person, which is an easy mistake to make because Chris behaves like a very religious person. Especially when his English go a bit wrong. Especially his English go a bit wrong and things go a bit wrong about Chris's speech pattern thing, Don. But, um, but I think Chris has got a great sense of humour. 
Has to get a bit of a laugh, really. I'm surprised he hasn't been on your program. He has been. He has, but he wouldn't get on the bed. But he get on the bed. Because he's a symbol of rectitude. I, but what? He wouldn't show his symbol of rectitude. <laughs> he wouldn't even get on the bed. <laughs> it's more than a symbol, actually. More of a, more of a knitting no, needle. No, he's adorable. Oh, he's adorable. I actually think. See, I've got one, when Chris Eubank says boxing is horrible and ghastly, and a lot of people get smashed up, and men in very smart suits make a lot of money about it. Well, I think good for you, Chris. I think good for you. He says it's a horrible, disgusting sport, and it is. And everyone's saying, no, it's lovely, it's got a great tradition. It isn't. It's the tradition of people with lots of money and nice suits leading a lot of not terribly bright people to beat their brains out. What's, um, what, what is the thing that you're also doing That's with Rufus... I'm around at Mickey Duff's house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What's um, the thing that you've just done with Rufus Sewell? With Rufus Sewell? Who's, Are you uh, more handsome than Rufus? No, you have to tell me that, Paula. The clock's ticking now. Tick, 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 don't answer. I've never yeah. met Rufus, but I bet you are. He's, he's a bit groovy, yes, he's a bit groovily handsome. And I, I sucked my cheeks in for weeks beforehand in preparation, but it didn't quite work. And what, were you, what have you been doing I with played him? John Locke, the 17th century uh, libertarian philosopher, you know. Um, you would. I know, of course I would. Yeah, you would. I'd done it at 10, given half a chance. <laughs> and Rufus plays Mr. Sexy Assistant to me, so I'm walking around talking philosophy all the time. And Rufus is just looking very groovy and so saying very posing. exciting things. So the subtext of Rufus's thing is, yes, when Shorty with a wig shuts up, guys, Check me out, you know. It's been very lovely to be on the bed with you. It's been lovely to be on the bed with you, it Paul. It really has. Second time round. And you must get that silly pin out of your stomach. <laughs> a lot of boys find it very attractive. I've just yet to meet any of them. You, your navel's and so nice. You don't need, you don't need to put bits of metal in it. Let's go over to Peter Smith and the Big Breakfast News and Weather. Oh.